start streaming. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. Look at them, boys. Oh, jeez, Louise. Looks a little dark. Mine. Nope. She lighting up a little bit, huh? Yep. How you doing, YouTube? We're back after a long absence. Hopefully you guys remember who we are. We all remember who you are. Camera makes me look a lot gayer than I am. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> you poor foot, man. I could have done it. You should have fucking told me. You always want... You always got to do things on your own. Uh. Uh, the cruise was nice. Thank you for asking. Uh. Oh, God. Um. Shit. Oh, it's moving. What, the camera? Maybe just because it's still away. Yeah. Needs to go. Needs to go down a smidge, but it's. <laughs> I got. Nope, nope, nope. Sit down. I got. Right, it. Sit down. Fine, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <clears throat> oh. oh, oh, fuck. Oh, God. Hey, how was the cruise, boys? It was moist. So much fun. I don't think I've ever had so much fun in my life. It was a fucking blast, man. Four day party. It was it was a party. It's a party, it's a party, it's a party. It was a party in my mouth. It was. We're really happy to be back. I know. Oh, yeah. It's great. It feels good. Alright, let's get it going. <clears throat> let's get it going. Let's get it going. If you've ever farted so hard your grandma's dentures fell out of your mouth, you've come to the right podcast. Hey, guys, I'm one half of the Bro IO podcast. I'm the delicious Nickalicious. And I'm Rob Dog. We are now known as the Cruise Boys. I'm just a nine and boy. <laughs> Not the Island Boys, the Cruise Boys. I'm just a cruise and boy. Whew. Jacking off. That was really small cabins to be jacking off. In those yeah, cabins. they were pretty small, but it was all right. Yeah, dude. <clears throat> Well, Beds weren't that bad for as shitty as it was, man. Dude, I had a, a perfect experience. Yeah, I did too. That's right, guys. We're back from our cruise. We're back from our uh, siesta. There was some other extenuating circumstances that prevented us from doing the podcast, including a cease and desist from Warner Brothers Media. I'm just kidding. You guys thought of something really bad. I was like, what? <laughs> really? <laughs> <You're> like, Damn, <laughs> who'd we piss off? Oh, who we make mad now? Is it you singing Creed? <laughs> when you are with me, I'm Scott Stab. Oh, yeah, man. We um, I had to get uh, I had to get foot surgery. Mm -hmm. Yesterday was the first chance, was the first time in over a week I got the surgery on it was Monday. A week today. Yeah, uh, last Monday. Yesterday was the first day I was able to to get down the steps to come down here and kind of straighten everything back out because I had it torn apart from when we left for the cruise. Uh, I had a I had a, a little fracture, but the biggest problem was I had a cyst tangled up in my tendons. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Fucking awful surgery. But we'll <clears throat> get into the surgery here in a second. Sure. We'll get into all oh, yeah. yeah, we got a lot. Of, we got, I feel like it's going to be a lot of talking before we actually get into the subjects. We got a lot to go over. Yeah. So let's say thank you to Jessica Kirby. Oh, my God, Jessica. Thanks for the Patreon pledge. Fuck. <laughs> uh, next, all you're going to give me this fucking one. Hootie who. <laughs> Keenan. <laughs> I, think that's who, I think that's how you say it. Thanks, Bowie. Appreciate you. <laughs> Thanks, man. How about Derek Fleener? Fleener the Wiener. <laughs> Thanks for being here, Big D. We appreciate you, pal. Thanks for being on the Bro Ohio podcast. Uh, Jay Caller. Ooh, Caller. That's kind of fucking hot, dude. Anytime I get to talk about dudes and collars, I'm rocked up. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hard PP. 
Ronald Walls, till the sweat drips down your balls. <laughs> Thank you, Ronald L. Walls, for the Patreon pledge, buddy. We love you. Tina Britton. Thank you very much, Miss Britton. Is that Britton or Britain? Britain. Britain. Tina Britain. Either way, she's British. <laughs> she sounds like the kind of girl that had braces whenever she's younger. Oh, I'm sure. Probably still does. Probably, you know, drove the boys wild oh, yeah. with the braces and shit. Got the old pube catchers. Thanks, Tina. We appreciate you. How about Maddie Pronk? <laughs> Pronk. Drunk pronk. I had some conch, sh- uh, conch fritters in the Bahamas. Those are delicious. But in terms of Matty fritters, I never had those. <laughs> pronk with the donk. Thanks, Matty P. We appreciate you. Ma- or is that Matty or Matey? Matey. I think it's Matty. Matey. Uh-huh. We just make shit up Thanks. anyways. <laughs> Seth Albright. Thank you very much, sir. All righty, all righty. <laughs> you get it? It sounds good. Well played. B. Beto Mosquito. Beto Mosquito, thanks for being here. Uh, That's what I call it when I jack off. (laughs) Gotta go Beto Mosquito. (laughs) My dick's about the size of a mosquito. (laughs) Got the old mosquito dick. Not the whole mosquito, but like the size of a mosquito dick. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Scout. Thanks, Scout. Scout, you're a great dog. I hope that's your name. Good solid golden retriever. (laughs) Thanks, Scout. Right. How about Cowboy Willie? Oh, man, that's my favorite part of a cowboy. He said, I'm here. I want some fucking ribeyes. Old cowboy Willie, thanks, buddy. Uh, Mike Northup, thank you very much. Oh boy, how about River Montana? When the red rivers flow and you just take the brown dirt road, River Montana, thanks for being here, big buddy. Uh, Harry Paratestes, thank you very much, Harry Paratestes. Ah! <laughs> really appreciate you. Got us again. <laughs> how about uh, Damien Trip? Trepton, Trepton, that is a tricky word there. Damien, well, my brother had a friend named Damien growing up. Weirdest motherfucker I ever met in my life. Smelled like cat piss. <laughs> you know, he was really good at video games, dude. Of course he was. Like Sega and shit. His parents didn't love him. Thanks, Damien. <laughs> Candace Drago, thank you very much, Candace. Uh, last but not least, Hannah loves bananas, as in cock bananas. <laughs> Thanks, Hannah. Thanks for being here. God bless you, Hannah. If you want to get ad-free content, access to other shit for $1 a month, go to patreon.com slash podcast. I think I'll skip the article this week, Rob. Yeah, man, I feel like we should. Because we got so much to talk about. Hold on to that for next week. We would like to say thank <coughs> you to everyone that came on the cruise. Yeah, it was a uh, it was a good time. Good meeting, everybody. I wish I could name every name that was on that boat with us. But thank you. The plan is tentatively. I think so. Looks like it. All right. Potentially. That's fine. Poten- potentially a Dayton, maybe. Yep. Dayton one soon. And then Texas within the next three to four months. Yep. Keep you posted on that. Might have to push you back for the beginning of the year, but we'll we'll get to you guys. We are. We're going to get to you. <clears throat> uh, we had so much fun on the trip. Uh, Royal Caribbean can't recommend them enough. If you guys want to take a nice yeah. cruise, skip Carnival, skip Norwegian, yeah. go to Royal Caribbean. Cheap prices, great drinks, great food, super clean. Hey, I've take done, care of you. I've done all three of those cruise lines in the Royal Caribbean one. This was by far our favorite one that we've done. Hell yeah. Skip the Bahamas. Don't go to the Bahamas, but just stay on the boat that day. But <laughs> It didn't matter where I was at on that boat. Yeah. Somebody was ready to bring me some alcohol. For sure, yeah. No matter. If I was in the middle of the pool, <clears throat> there's a little pool little pool boy flagging me down. Coco K fucked, man. That place was a, a great time. I heard there was a spot there, like a club, that was just wild. We The fucking pool was. Okay, that's probably where you guys were. Yeah, we were, we were with... Uh, Another couple there. Yeah. We were hanging out with them, and it was a fucking party. We went to the old people side, South Beach. Beautiful yeah. over there, calm, motherfucking jellyfish everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Them bitches were sailing past me, and I'm like, eh! I did not want to get stung by a jellyfish. <laughs> yeah, we were out there in the fucking water, and the they had like these tables in the water when you they had you had like the water bar that you could like swim up to, and yeah, harder yeah. than shit to get up out there, get actually on the <laughs> on the dock, but. Uh, they had little tables, and there was a whole bunch of jellyfish out there, so we kind of got freaked out. But That's perfect. That's when we went to the pool. But, yeah, it was a great time. Thanks to everybody that came. It was a great time. Now, let me tell you this. Sure, tell me. I had this foot surgery. Mm-hmm. They put me under for it, Rob. Yeah, you were, I was, you were scared, man. Scared shitless to be put under. Mm-hmm. Literally uh, setting up at night, sick to my stomach, being worried about 
being put under. No, I was ready with the malpractice lawsuit, man. I was <laughs> I was ready for it. <laughs> you like look right here. He was worried about it. It's documented. <laughs> I had my lawyer on the line, and we were uh, we were ready, man. No, Stacy's grandpa broke his hip. He was fine. They put him under. When he came out of anesthesia, full blown <clears throat> late stage dementia. Couldn't mm-hmm. remember a fucking thing. So I was thought I was either gonna die or get full blown or get dementia. Dementia. <laughs> God damn, what would I have done, man? Yeah, dude. <laughs> forget forget about your wife and the kids. What would I have done? <laughs> Prop me up like a weekend at Bernie's over here. <laughs> so here's what happened. The night before, I took a shower. They said the night before, take a shower with uh, antibacterial soap. Mm-hmm. I said, all right, that's cool. <laughs> that's cool. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> You're sitting on there with a bunch of hand soap, like fucking I, Dial. No, just... no uh, Dial Gold is my favorite soap. I love it, yeah. Yeah, f- that's what I keep in the bathroom. Mm-hmm. So I dialed gold my body the night before. <laughs> yeah, you did. I figured you. That's, that's what you did. I did. <laughs> that's what I would have done, too. Yep. This shit smells good. And then I get out of the shower. I go to put on my underwear. And when I'm putting on my underwear, I don't want to get ahead of myself. But I said, no to self. That's all I'm saying right now. Mm-hmm. Is I said, no to self. All right. So I finish getting oh, dressed. I, I know get, this is going. I get ready for bed. I go to sleep. I wake up. <laughs> Yeah. Um, we had I, I put on some sweatpants. This is such a good story. Sweat shorts. <laughs> I put uh. on some sweat shorts and uh, crocodilians and a white white shirt. Whatever. Yeah. But we go to surgery. It starts at twelve. I gotta be there at twelve. They take me back almost immediately. Mm-hmm. They put me in a little area where they start getting the surgery stuff going. Yeah. She's like, "Are you the guy that was on the cruise?" I'm like, "Yeah." She said, "How was it?" I said, "It was great." Uh, we it was actually uh, for my podcast. I do. She's like. Oh, I love podcasts. She said, my favorite podcast is uh, Last Podcast on the Left. Oh, damn. I said, well, I've got something <laughs> to tell you because... Uh, if, you, if you want a watered-down <laughs> podcast on the left, Last Podcast on the Left... If you think those guys are cool and funny <laughs> and fresh, then you should maybe check out the Bro Ohio <laughs> podcast. So she's like, oh, my God. She's like, when, she's like I'm going to su- su- subscribe right now. There's an older lady and a younger lady. T- nicest people ever. Yeah. Nicest people. They took really, really good care of me, getting me ready. Uh, and then they, then she says, "Okay, just go ahead and get in the gown, and then we'll we'll get you hooked up and stuff." They had to take my blood and all yeah. that stuff. So she steps out, and I, I drop trowel right away. And uh, as soon as I drop trowel, I remember what the note to self was. <laughs> I was at the bottom of my underwear drawer because I took all my good underwear to the cruise. To the cruise, yes. And I was getting to the bottom of the barrel. I got one pair of Duluth underwear that have always been my favorite, mm-hmm. but these things don't have a crotch left on them. <laughs> like they are not, they are not attached anywhere anymore, bro. There's just a, there's probably a good 10, 11, 12 inch hole, fucking hole in the bottom of these underwear. So it doesn't even have like a middle seam or anything. It's just blown out. My balls hang down lower than the underwear do. <laughs> Hell yes. My dick and balls hang down lower those, than the underwear. Those are your sexy underwear. They're a kilt. They're essentially a kilt. They're like edible underwear. They're yeah, just they're your crotchless they're, panties. They're holding on to nothing. <laughs> Hell yes. I dropped trowel there in the surgery, uh, the you know triage area, and I said, oh my fucking God, I'm wearing these crotchless underwear. <laughs> That's fucking hot. This lady's already <laughs> subscribing to the podcast. Uh, You're already giving her the show. <laughs> I said my balls, my dick and balls, which, you know, I wasn't sweating too bad. They're, they're fucking yeah. nurses, whatever. But she came back and she, they, they cut it up with my wife and I. My wife was there for me every second of the every second step of this. <laughs> yeah, she was giving me play by plays the entire time. She's like, oh, my God, he is wearing oh, these underwear and his nuts are hanging out of them. <laughs> yeah, bad, dude. My balls are all the way out. Yeah. So I start reasoning with myself. I said, all right, I'm just going to keep my shit tight. I'm going to sit like a lady for the rest of this trip. I'm mm-hmm. going to keep my crotch kind of tight. Keep my knees pinned together. <laughs> you have that kind of control. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I'm trying to reason with myself at this point. I'm trying to talk myself into thinking I have that kind of control. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, they come back and they <laughs> they're doing they're taking my blood and putting the IV in me and shit. And then they uh, said, "All right, it's time to take you back to surgery." And I am squeezing my fucking knees together so tight, <laughs> like I'm the eternal virgin, 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 waiting to have my soul taken. And I, I when they're wheeling me to surgery, I'm just like, please God, don't let them fucking. They're they're operating on the side and top of my foot. Mm-hmm. There's no reason for them to be up in my balls. Yeah, yeah. And I'm thinking to myself, please don't let these people 
because they're probably expecting, you know, if they go above my waist, they're like, it's all right. The guy's got on underwear. Then they're going to get me, who's got, like, fucking dog meat just laying down there, you know, blown out underwear. Dog meat. Dick, balls, ass, hairy taint. <laughs> I still had uh, I still had sand in my crotch from the cruise. Yeah, I was yeah. fucked up, bro. I think I still do, man. <laughs> but uh, so I'm laying in the OR, and they said we're gonna need a block for him. And I was like, what? And they said, well, roll over. We're gonna put a block under your left buttocks. Oh no! To kind of tilt your body. But they got they got like covers. They got me like blankets and covers. Yeah. Like so I'm like, okay. I roll over to get the block under my butt cheek. Foop, lights out, dude. Gone. Just oh shit, faded away. You ever been put out before? No. Uh, whenever I was younger, but I don't really remember it. Oh, <laughs> dude, it's like someone took your fucking batteries out. It's like yeah. someone's re- someone Y2K happened. They took your batteries out. I got this, tubes when I was like seven, and I, I they put me under, but I don't really remember it. It's what it feels like to die. Just like <laughs> Hell nothing yes. happens. Sweet. As soon as I go to sleep, I remember the fleeting thought, right? As I'm when I'm rolling over, showing my ass, I'm thinking like, please don't I'm, look at my balls. I'm thinking like, hey, watch out back there. <laughs> You're going to get the fucking fruit bowl going to fall out on you. I roll over and they cram the block under my left butt cheek and I <clears throat> go to sleep. Yeah. Then instantly I'm, I'm back awake. Mm-hmm. When I wake back up, the surgery's done. It was like that quick. As soon as yeah. I rolled over. And they said, how you feeling? And I'm like, oh, it feels like you guys removed my left butt cheek. <laughs> it's because that block was still under my butt, and they didn't uh, realize it. Yeah. And they, uh, they, they're like, oh, he's got the block under there. They took the block out. And I'm just sitting there coming back, too, and I'm like, all right. I wonder if they had to move my gown. And I reached down to feel my body, to feel the gown. No gown. No gown. No gown. You know, I've had, like sex oh, with my no. i've had really aggressive sex with my wife where i like lay her down mm-hmm. and i fucking grab her bra and i push it up near her chin or whatever yeah start fucking going, yeah yeah mean mad sex that's where my gown was this shit was balled up underneath <laughs> the whole entire fucking <laughs> they were fucking the shit out of you <laughs> <laughs> the whole entire six foot gown <laughs> he's like pull his tits out <laughs> pull, his, pull his fucking tits out i see him bounce i knew that little slut was wearing crotchless <laughs> fucking underwear and I, dude, I fucking the the gown is balled up under my chin, like the doctor just fucking he's fucking choking your ass. With he's beating taters on me, dude. <laughs> Did you come here wearing your fucking sexy underwear? Yeah, you you're getting it, boy. You think that you can just walk in here with your little balls hanging out? <laughs> Oh God! You think you can just walk in here with your little fucking balls hanging out? Not get it. And that's what happened to me, dude. And, uh, oh God! I didn't feel any trauma on my <laughs> on my crotch or anything. Mm-hmm. I didn't feel any trauma Shut up. on my rear end. OBS reconnected. Huh? What do you know? Check, check. I don't know, man. All right, we're fixing the YouTube stream. But if you've ever had your uh, butt beaten up during uh, uh, surgery, send us an email, <laughs> brohiopodcast at gmail.com. Dude, anesthesia's, anesthesia's great. Oh, for sure. It was uh, it was really nice. I'm going to take this YouTube off because it's distracting me. I don't, okay. I don't fucking care. One of my favorite things is to watch the videos that people come in out of the anesthesia, and they're high as fuck. Well, they said, what are you, how are you feeling? I said, it feels like you guys removed my left butt cheek. <laughs> Yeah. I said, oh God, move the block! And I started freaking out a little bit. And I said, I wonder if they got my gown. And I felt it up, crammed up under my chin. <laughs> Whoa, uh-huh. <laughs> Jesus! I'm looking for the doctor. I don't see him, so he fucking he hit it, quit it, and forget it. He got out yeah. of there. Maybe they really didn't intubate you. They fucking they be fucked yeah. your throat. OBS reconnection successful. Okay. Is it awful on YouTube? Were they complaining at all on there? No, nobody said anything. It doesn't look to be shit i mean any more so than what it usually is okay <clears throat> they're watching us you guys know what to expect yeah dude i'm sorry <laughs> sorry to all of you but let's talk about marcus wesson all right the vampire king murder that's a fucking awesome moniker right there the vampire king i like it probably had himself a big old dick oh for sure i saw the pictures of him he definitely did i bet he had a little wiener nah no way and you're gonna find out with, why with hair like that through this story 
Uh, nothing and nothing would get us back on track better than an incestuous murder kind of kidnapping situation. Oh yeah. I had a lot of good topics and going through my head. I uh internet hoaxes I was kind of going through. Ooh, that's like, fu- that's fun. Um <clears throat> I like those type of episodes cuz it gives a lot of time to bullshit. Yeah. There was a lot of good ones and then there was another like a couple other murders. We need to do that one. That's a good one. And a good uh good uh maybe we can do it later this week. I have a uh I have a topic that I want to um, that I want to touch on. I bet you do. <laughs> Eventually, you know, I want to do like one on um, old school like internet shock videos. Oh, okay, like Mr. Hands and like mi- yeah, Mr. Hands two and uh, girls, one two girls one cup. Um, two, all know, those. You know, two girls one cup didn't phase me at all because uh, it was fake poop. There's no way that was real poop. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's no way it was shit from an ass. That was not shit from an ass. <laughs> shit from a butt. <laughs> I watched this. I had pulled up this TikTok video earlier. This guy drinking coffee in the woods. He's like, "Wipe your ass. <laughs> Keep wiping your ass. Wipe your ass until there's no more brown." <laughs> and that's that was it. Man, it's fucking hard. Okay, look, I am gonna backtrack a little bit here. That fucking cruise toilet paper. Holy fucking shit! They do not want you flushing with wipes. You bet your fucking ass. After the first time I shit. I broke out the wipes because I was going to follow the rules because they were going to charge you if your toilet clogged up. Yeah. I just three wipes flush, three wipes flush. <laughs> dude, my asshole. <laughs> you are such a little. Uh, dude, my asshole was like hamburger meat. Like the first, <laughs> the first time after I shit in that cruise. Oh, man. That was the most wretched my stomach has felt in a long time. Dude, there was We ate so much. There's so much food and so much alcohol. Yeah. I literally couldn't. My body couldn't do it anymore. Yeah, it hurt in my butt. Yeah, man. I was... When I come back for that surgery, they did something to my butt too. <laughs> Your butt just hasn't been the same. It's had a hard two weeks. <laughs> yeah, you're awfully young for a colonoscopy. <laughs> I'm like, that's not what I was supposed to have done, doc. <laughs> oh <clears throat> man. Yeah. So we're gonna be talking about Marcus West, and he's the Vampire King. Uh, you know, he's not a real vampire. He's just a raging psycho. Is he a king though? Oh, he a king. Oh, hell yeah. He a king for show. Sure. Yeah, good deal. He was born August 22nd, 1946. Long, Damn. long time. Back uh, back uh, right around it's World War II. Same year Jerry Pauly was born. Old ass <laughs> motherfucker, yeah. No, Jerry was born in 36. <laughs> okay, I got that wrong. I love those two. Jerry's awesome. Jerry's named after the, the fucking mouse on the cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> That's how old he is. <laughs> oh, fuck. Yeah, he was born in Kansas. What an exciting state to be born in. <laughs> right. And he was the eldest of four children. He, uh, his parents were members of the Seventh Day Adventist Church. Of course they were. Man, in the Seventh Day Adventist, they they have a lot of emphasis on the second coming of Christ. They're, uh, for lack of a better term, there's some fucking uh, Looney Tunes. <laughs> there's some wild ass people. More so than the others. No, not really. Okay, <laughs> but uh, the Holy Rollers. How they, do they compare to them? They each have their different uh, different brands of crazy. For man. sure, for sure. They're all crazy. Marcus's mother. Now she was the one that was ate up with religion, and his dad. He wasn't quite as ate up with the religion. He was actually Marcus's dad was actually a slobbering drunk. Like, here, here. Like, like Robert <laughs> by. Yeah, buddy, he was a slobbering drunk. Uh, his dad all used to beat the shit out of him, and uh, he would beat his siblings as well. He had three siblings. But he would. Uh, his dad would go on to leave. He would leave the family while Marcus was very young, but he left with his male cousin uh, with whom he was in a homo- homosexual relationship <laughs> with. Of course he was, because <laughs> why not? If you've ever left your kids because you were gay and you're <laughs> fucking your, your cousin, cousin, send us an email, brohiopodcast at gmail.com. I feel like our inbox is going to be flooded with emails oh, at that well, one. Well, it's going to be my fucking underwear flooded right now, buddy, <laughs> just talking about this. You ain't wearing the holy ones, are you? Because it's going down your leg. <laughs> yeah, no. As soon as we got home. Oh, she was doing laundry yesterday, and she walked by me. She had them in her hand. Yeah. She said, I'm throwing these away. <laughs> and I said, please, do me a favor. <laughs> Throw those away. You got to get someone who can knit and they can crochet you Jesus a cool pattern. Christ. In I want to take all my crotchless underwears and have my mom turn them into a T-shirt. <laughs> that fucking T-shirt smell like balls. I'm calling my mom right balls now. Balls and ass. I'm calling her. She ain't going to answer. You think she'll do it? No. If she would do it. But she ain't going to answer. We'll see if she answers. <laughs> Shut up. 
she'll answer. Yeah, for now, and then she'll hang up. She might be sleeping. Hello. Mom. Son. What are you doing? Trying to get to my phone. Oh. Hey, um, you know when like people die and then the, they make like the they make the blankets out of their old shirts. What now? You know, like when people die. And then uh-huh. they take all their old shirts and then they turn them into like a blanket. Uh huh. I was gonna see if you would do something like that for me, but I want you to use all my old underwear. Um, no, because your underwear, from what I get, has holes in it, and plus you have sharded in your underwear so many times that has it has it has um your f- underwear. You're, and you're doing a podcast. No, I was trying to, and then you started being nasty, so I had to stop recording it because you're being so freaking nasty, mom. Yeah, and it's a Monday night, and I was stupid enough to answer the phone. No, I was trying to, but you're being so gross. Talking about me having accidents. Mm Mm-hmm. All right. That's one of the other reasons why you wore, why you rode the short bus. I got to go, Mom. I love you. I love you. Bye. (laughs) She's so fucking awesome. She's trying to tune me up. (laughs) She's coming for blood. She was, man. She accused me of being uh, <laughs> like uh, going to special school. Yeah, she did. She fucking hit you with that one two Tyson yeah, combo. Her bitch used to walk me to the bus stop. She knows I rode to a full size. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> she was the one that bought your helmet, so it's okay. <laughs> Dude, she scrubbed poop stains out of my underwear for a lot of years. <laughs> yeah. She's put up with a lot. <laughs> this is back before boxers and briefs were a thing. It was only right. tight, strictly tidy whities <laughs> Yeah, can't imagine how many fucking tidy whities you went through. <laughs> that business was that business was tight and white. That's yeah. all that business was. <laughs> you kept them in business, <laughs> dude. I remember when I was a kid, I'd pull my underwear down and just be like, "What the fuck? I don't like <laughs> I didn't shit myself." <laughs> Where did that come yeah, from? Always, man. I just be like, "God damn, what oh, the man. what the fuck?" Where? Yeah. There's no way I pooped my pants today. <laughs> Should I do that now as an adult? <laughs> but then I, as I got older, I realized if you sit on something pointy, mm-hmm. you know, you kind of sit on a ledge somewhere where the ledge kind of goes up your butt crack. Yeah, and it rubs get, in your asshole. You're going to get a duty stain. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I play a dangerous game every now and then where I, like, I'll sit down and I'm like, is this sweat or is it shit? <laughs> and then I'll wipe and sometimes sometimes it'll be clean and sometimes it'll be poopy. And I'm like, okay. And who's oh. our next contestant on? <laughs> is it sweat or shit? <laughs> Robert from the Ohio Podcast, celebrity guest. He's a celebrity guest on. Is it sweat or is it shit? Depends on how gassy I am. I could. I can usually guess. Like, oh, this is gonna be poopy. Yeah. Have you ever left your family for a gay cousin? Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Still time. All my, <laughs> all my cousins are straight that I know of. So. Yeah, not until they meet me. <laughs> Who's that big boy <laughs> with the crotchless print with the crotchless <laughs> panties on? <laughs> Now, they wouldn't stay in Kansas for very long as they made their way, uh, uh, you know, a little further west to San Bernardino, California. Oh, yeah. What a shithole that place is. <laughs> Everything in California is a shithole right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, they did this when Marcus was very young. Love California, but they got to get that shit under control. <laughs> Gas, $7 a gallon. Too many fucking people. Homeless people. People, uh, you know, a lot. I was at, uh, uh, we went to Alcatraz, uh, me yeah. and my buddy Roy. Yep. We got off the... Uh, we get off the off the the boat coming back and we go on the boardwalk there's two guys just fucking making out okay like homeless guys or just normal dudes just two normal guys oh, okay. just making out just in love i start jacking off and the cops <laughs> run up and start yelling at me mm-hmm. about that and don't say anything to them man about the way they're kissing <laughs> So how am I supposed to feel about that state for someone like me who's just visiting? Sure. You, you get you see something culturally shocking like that. I've mm-hmm. never seen two guys make out in front of me before. Yeah. And it fucking got me all, you know, yeah. got me all ooey gooey. You know, like when you make brownies, you don't cook them all the way through. Oh, yeah. That's what my fucking crotchless <laughs> panties did. <laughs> I had the ooey gooey's. <laughs> Yeah, I know there's a lot of ladies that be listening to this podcast. When you slide in bed with your man tonight, just grab his hand and shove it down your shorts and say, hey, baby. Shorts. <laughs> so unattractive. Shove it down your trousers and say, 
<laughs> Sweetheart, I got the ooey gooeys. <laughs> Tell your husband you got the ooey gooeys. And uh, oh, please do send us an email. Yeah, if, you, if you do that, please send us an email. <laughs> Can we fuck? I got the ooey gooeys. Oh my god, I got the ooey gooeys. <laughs> That's so fucking hot. <laughs> oh hell yeah, girl. <laughs> god, I wish you're my sister. <laughs> oh man, oh, what the fuck? Should have fucking known this one was gonna be off the rails. Yeah, dude. Now, the notes, the notes weren't very long for this, so like we gotta stall a little bit on this one. That's good. <laughs> we, we do a good job. We're with halfway it. there. So there, there his dad is, fucking his cousin out in the barn behind the house. Two guys getting it on hard. And then his dad looks at his cousin and says, we got to get out of here. I got to leave these stupid fucking kids. <laughs> so his dad took off, left him. Marcus and his, uh, Marcus and his mom and his siblings, they're there. They set, uh, they set sail to San Bernardino, California. And he pretty much flunked out of high school. Oh, he's, he's a yeah. dumb shit. <laughs> okay. But, Makes sense. I, and I shouldn't call Marcus a dumb shit. For everyone that spoke of Marcus, they said he had, he possessed exceptional intelligence. He had a, a flowery, excuse me, I almost perked on my, puked on myself. I was right going to say, uh, that was, was one of them daily doubles from McDonald's. <laughs> That's almost a projectile vomit there. You ever had a daily double from McDonald's? I don't know. What is that? Dude, it's, a, it's a McDouble, but um, well, it's, it's meat and cheese. It sounds like a prize. Dude, it's so good. They're so good. They're sneaky. You, you don't see them on the menu. It's a, it's a McDouble, but there's there's no uh, pickles or onions or mustard or ketchup, so okay. it's just beef and cheese, mm-hmm. and then lettuce, tomato, and mayonnaise. Okay. And it's delicious. It's perfect. I don't and fuck on, with the and, tomato, but... I, that's... And onions. There's onions on there, too. Okay. It's really good. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. So there his dad was, fucking his cousin out... We're already past that point. Yeah, we're past. <laughs> he's 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 smart, but he's stupid. Yeah, he he, he possessed exceptional intelligence. They said he had a, a, a really uh, uh, an advanced vocabulary. He could kind of talk circles around anybody, uh, everybody. But he was just kind of so fucking weird and out there that mm-hmm. people didn't even really like to talk to him very sure. much. But yeah, he was a really smart guy. So he didn't necessarily flunk out of high school. He just said, I'm fucking done with high school. Yeah. But it's 1960-something. Everybody was done with high school in 1960-something. You could still be a doctor. you <laughs> fucking drop out and still be a doctor in the 60s. Yeah, it's different. Yeah, this, I mean, you could still be fucking smart, but still do bad in school. For sure. I mean, it's like, it, yeah, their fucking education system's a little weird, so. In, uh, whenever he uh, dropped out of school, he went ahead and joined the Army because be sure. all that you can be. And he was an ambulance driver in the army, and it got me thinking about all the fucking dumb jobs. I've had a lot of friends over the years that have been in the army. Mm-hmm. There's been a lot of like I don't know what it is about the army, but a lot of these guys, I say, hey, what? I always say, what's your MOS? Like, what's your military occupational specialty? And I don't even think they really call it an MOS anymore. But when you ask somebody that, they they know what you're asking. Yeah, them. yeah, yeah. And uh, I say, what, what do you do in the army? What, what's your MOS? And some guys like security forces, infantry. And then I had one buddy. He's like, I just fucking folded tents for four years. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> you did what? <laughs> I just folded tents. <laughs> the other guy was like, uh, really? I just I uh, I did like pumped up basketballs and stuff. I was supply sergeant. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> He just pumped up basketball. He's like, I'd set up the volleyball nets. If you pay people to do that shit, for uh, the U.S. military pays people to <laughs> fold fucking tents and blow up volleyballs. It's a glorified gym teacher. And here I am, you know, thousands of dollars in debt. <laughs> Uncle Sam, help me. Give that guy folding tents a break. Help me out a little bit, you know? Give that guy uh, uh, blowing up volleyballs. Give him a 15. <laughs> Give him a, a smoke break. Help me out. Shit, and that just got me thinking, what a bunch of dumb fucking jobs in the Army. Well, ah, dude, I am so thankful for all of you that have dedicated your lives to serving in the U.S. military. Oh, yeah. De- defending and protecting us. Thank you. My hat's off to you. But to you guys in there folding tents in the Army, <laughs> where do you get off? You know what? Someone folding a tent in the Army, probably same guy that gets like one of them tattered flag tattoos on his forearm. <laughs> gets uh, uh, you know, uh, we the people on the back, we the people on the back of his truck, the big window tent on yeah. the back of his Colorado, his yeah. uh, the Silverado, chasing freedom, baby. 
chasing freedom, bub. But dude, they can say more than me. I That's didn't true. serve. Nah, fuck no, I never would. I served myself a fat ass pumpkin pie from McDonald's <laughs> earlier. Right I'm, I'm too worried about myself, man. Fuck the country. <laughs> okay. I, served, I don't want to die. I served that uh fucking uh that doctor a, a big old <laughs> dose of my balls during that fucking <laughs> foot surgery. <laughs> yeah, I'll I fucking serve my toilet a big pile of shit, but that's about all I'm serving. What if he flipped my robe up and said, God damn, those are the biggest balls. <laughs> He'd say, huge balls, tiny dick. <laughs> Same here, brother. He'd say, this boy's got a big old set of balls on him. <laughs> all right. Shortly after leaving, well, he, yeah. Shortly after leaving the <laughs> army, Marcus... <laughs> Marcus shacked up with Rosemary Solorio. Got to go after them women that are named after spices. The crazy Hispanic women. Or herbs. Solorio, she sounds like uh, some shit that a witch would put in a bottle. <laughs> yeah. yeah, my darling, drink this Solorio. <laughs> so he, he shacks up with this lady named uh, Rosemary Solorio. She had some baggage, though, buddy. What was that baggage? She had eight kids already. <laughs> Jesus Christ. The pussy was a fucking revolving door. Yeah, it's a fucking conveyor belt pussy. <laughs> hey, whatever you're out of the way, I'm coming out, too. What <laughs> eight fucking kids. Woo-wee. Make room. Yeah, man, I would throw in the towel. This pussy is going to sleep. <laughs> yeah, Thing's got up. some miles on it. So he shacks up with her, and then in 1974, that's kind of when... Um, they actually did have two kids together. Okay. They had a boy and a girl. Uh, but in 1974, that's kind of when all this nastiness, the sludge, started with Marcus. Because we've kind of talked about him in a positive light so far. You know, so, oh, he's big dude. He's got cool dreads. This was an imposing figure of a man. He was mm. six foot tall, three or four hundred pounds, and he had the biggest mane of dreadlocks i've ever seen yeah. on a human he's a very intimidating looking dude deep dark gray eyes just uh you know a scary dude he was um he was a a, a black male with like black gray dreadlocks you can look him up just look up the vampire king huge Mar- dreadlocks marcus wesson he's a scary motherfucker yeah he's a scary looking dude and if this dude popped up in an alley when I was walking through, uh, I know what I would say to him. I'd say, let me smell your dreads, dog. <laughs> I think I'd just spread my butt. Yeah. What do things smell like? <laughs> I'd be like, yes, sir. Let me smell those squirrel tails you got hanging on your head there, Daniel Boone. <laughs> and if he'd have been like, I'm going to fucking kill you. I'm like, I guess so. I guess that's what we're doing. I guess I'm dying tonight. Come take me. So this is how it ends. Don't hurt me. I just had foot surgery. <laughs> Shows the pity, sir. But, yeah, 1974, that's um, Marcus started sexually assaulting Rosemary's eight-year-old oh, daughter, yeah. Elizabeth Solorio. And, yes, when I say sexually assaulting, this is full-blown conditioning, Oof. laying in bed with her, nasty petting, progressing into full-blown sexual con- uh, contact. The sexual abuse never ended, and he would actually legally marry Elizabeth when she was 14 years old and he was 27 years old. Holy shit. And if you needed any indicator of how fucked up shit is in California, while this was 1974, the laws may have changed since then. But the fact that this was even able to happen, because like I said, he legally married this girl when she was 14 years old, and he was double her age. He was 27 years old. Cancel him. He's canceled. He is canceled. So we're we're uh, we're the ones doing it. <laughs> yeah. Can we start this uh, cancel culture? We're canceling you, yeah. Vampire yeah. King. <laughs> You're canceled, brother. How come no one's trying to cancel us yet? I think we, we don't. Do. Don't ask that. <laughs> We've done a really good job of walking the dumb line. <clears throat> uh, yeah, but we yeah. don't go over the line, really. I don't think so. I mean, I don't know. You know, his dad was gay. Like, he was fucking his cousin and shit. Yeah. This guy, his, da- his dad was gay. Not only is he gay, but he's incest. <laughs> yeah, his cousin. <laughs> gay. Being gay is forgivable. That's kind of cool, but incest? <laughs> and was- when I was doing the research for this, I was sitting there thinking, like, dude, which one of my fucking cousins would I fuck? <laughs> and I was thinking about it, and then I thought to myself, that 
there's none of them I would fuck. <laughs> and then I thought a little more, and I realized I didn't think about any female cousins at all. I only thought about guy cousins. <laughs> well, there you go. How cool of me. I know, right? <laughs> it's very woke. So all my cousins listen to this. You're not getting it. <laughs> yeah. I hate to break it to you, but... uh. Yeah. Oh, no. I think Noah listens. I'd fuck him. Probably. I don't really know any of my cousins. So that's a problem. Yeah. Um, isn't that crazy, man? Yeah, because my, my mom and... The only family that I really know is my mom's side of the family, and she's one of three girls, and she's the only one with daughters. Wow. Or she's, she's the only one with kids. And then the other two don't have kids, and then the people on my dad's side, those aren't really my cousins. I mean, yeah. my stepdad's yeah. side, I should say. I don't know my dad's side of the family, so... That's crazy, man. Think about how many family members you have out there. Yeah, that I don't even know about. Like, blood out yeah. there, man, that you don't even know. I know I got a half-sister. I got on Ancestry.com. For sure, but... And, uh... I don't do that shit. A lot of people on there. They say, hey, boy, you Nicholas? Yeah. I said, yeah, dude, who the fuck are you? Talking to all kinds of people on there from the Alexander family tree. But I didn't know you had a half-sister. Mm -hmm. Have you seen her? No, I've seen pictures of her. I think her name's Rachel. The That's same, about all I know. Same last name? No, my what my old last name was. I don't, you can tell me off air, but I don't remember. No, I don't care. Well, it's Ellis. Okay. How old? Like, is she your age? or uh, A little bit older, I think. Okay. Yeah, I think she was older than me. You think she would come on the show? I don't know. <laughs> I've fucking never talked to her before, so probably not. You're like, hey, welcome on the show, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> For all I know, she don't even know about me. No, she, she might not. I don't know. I'll Send me in first. I'd be like, <laughs> hey. Tell me what you think. Tell me what you think of me. Just tell me, like off the off the cuff. Just tell me what you think of me right now. And she'd be like, "I think you're creepy and fat." You know, I'm like, "Well, good, because I'm not the one that's here to see you." <laughs> <laughs> There's a much <clears throat> smaller, more handsome version of me. He's right. He's waiting out. He's waiting over here in this Lincoln Town Car. <laughs> we bring cameras and everything, dude. Yeah, people would watch that. Oh, yeah, it might be fun. All right. Uh, so four months after they after they wed, after Elizabeth and the Vampire King, they got married. Oh, four months later, she gave birth to their first child. Marcus and Elizabeth <laughs> would go on to have ten children together. God, could pull out of a fucking driveway. Oh no, man, he was. Uh, she was underage. Man. Yeah, she's. Oh my god, it was fucking gross. <clears throat> and as you'll recall. There were a gaggle of kids living in this house that he moved into. He moved in with Rosemary, and there were eight kids in there to begin with. So those are all of his. He didn't technically marry her, but he got her knocked up twice. Rosemary, who was much older than him. Mm -hmm. And then he knocked up Rosemary's daughter. So he knocked up the mom and the daughter. Yeah, they keep it in the family. Uh, you gotta keep it all the way in the family. <laughs> yeah. This you gotta is, wait until she's 18. This is like a fucking Brazzers video. <laughs> yeah, dude, I remember one time uh, I was seeing this girl. She was 17 and I was 18, and she was trying to get in my britches, and I said, no way, Jose. <laughs> We're not doing this shit. Attaboy. You nasty, nasty. And um, so I, 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 and then I had to do the police polygraph test. Mm -hmm. And he's like, I'm sensing a lot of hesitation when you say you've never been sexually active with a <laughs> a young child before uh, i'm like just give me the question about fucking the dog again <laughs> i'm confident with those ones there's so many things that i'm i was so sure of that there, there, there's no deception but yeah. he's like i can't help but think you're lying right now i'm like i'm not lying about that dude yeah they hit you hard with some of them fuck that shit. that guy that i the guy that did mine was convinced that i fucked goats <laughs> <laughs> he was fucking convinced ding 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 he, he hit me out of he hit me out of the blue with a you ever fucked a farm animal you ever and I'm like what, what I fucked a fish but not a, is that a fish a farm animal I remember my dude smelled like scotch a little bit like, yeah. you, ever, <laughs> you ever fuck a fart I'm like hell yeah man <laughs> fucking fucking a fart before I walked in here I think I stuck my dick in one of them singing bass that are up on a plaque a Billy Bass <laughs> yeah the Billy Bass does that count <laughs> that thing could suck. <laughs> You know those birds, you push the button and they repeat what you say? <laughs> I love that toy growing up. Mine just went... <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? What the fuck, man? Uh, we gotta go. We gotta go. Sorry, man. Whatever. <laughs> Polly want a cracker? <laughs> Jesus, dude. As you'll recall, like I said, there was a gaggle of kids living in the house that he moved into. 
one of Elizabeth's sisters, whom had so one of the girls that lived in the house when he initially moved in, she had seven kids. She was hooked on drugs. Eh, so she said, and, and these seven kids, they were being sexually abused by other people in the oh, house. God. They were having fucking cigarettes put out on them and shit. Oh, bad, my God. bad life. So this drug addict <clears throat> chick says, how about I just give you these seven kids? And then Marcus and his wife, his young wife, Elizabeth, I think that's her name, yeah. I don't think you can yeah. just do that. They just took the seven kids. <laughs> you can't, you can't just barter children. So for fuck's sake, he's got these seven kids that were given to him. They had ten kids of their own, and then there were ten kids in this house to begin with when they first moved in. Holy shit. I have no idea at any given point how many kids were in one house with this guy. It's hard to tell. But it was uh it was a colony of humans. And they're all fucking related too. But uh, with, with the with the addition of these seven kids being give, uh, gifted to him, Marcus would actually have a pretty good lifestyle living off of welfare. But he also faced he wasn't he didn't do a very good job with a, with his welfare because he was actually charged with welfare fraud and perjury uh, one year. And it was because when he was filling out his welfare paperwork, mm-hmm. he failed to mention that he owned a boat. So, <laughs> oh God. But the funny part about the boat was when you think of somebody owning a boat, Mm -hmm. like, uh, you know, they got a little recreational hot rod boat or a little fishing boat. He was living on the boat with all these people. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. (laughs) That was like his residence. Holy shit. A bunch of people in this, uh, like, 28-foot long boat. Damn. (laughs) I don't know, man. Can't hide money. Yeah. (laughs) It was a rickety-ass boat, I'm sure it was. Enough to get him some welfare fraud charges. Oh my god, I'm falling apart over here. Wow. I gotta have a little sip. Take another drink of bourbon. <laughs> that, that'll help. That'll help the hiccups. All this talk about this guy fucking his cousins got me so <laughs> discombobulated. <laughs> now part of his poverty is he would wherever he had wherever he could find room, uh, shacks, boats, vacant houses, that's where he would stay with his family. Uh, now, Marcus would oftentimes scrounge hamburgers from the McDonald's trash cans to feed his family. <laughs> That's a struggle right there. <laughs> the old McStruggle sandwich. <laughs> the old McStruggle. You get the McDouble at the window, you get the McStruggle <laughs> out of the trash can. The old McDumpster. <laughs> in the mid and late 1990s, the family lived in a trailer in a large army tent in the Santa Cruz Mountains on land with no running water. The Wessons also lived for a time in a decaying 63-foot tugboat off the shore of Marin County, California. (laughs) Fucking tugboat. Uh, Holy shit. (laughs) Yeah, that's every kid's dream to live in a little tugboat. (laughs) Hell yeah. Sometimes they lived in a school bus. By the late 1990s, the children of Marcus and Elizabeth Wesson were old enough to work, and Mr. Wesson used their money to buy buy a, a building in Fresno. So he he bought an office space. It wasn't a um, it wasn't a, a residential. It wasn't zoned for residents. Mm-hmm. Residential, but he he bought like an office space, and he had the entire all these mongoloids living in there. <laughs> in a, I mean, I can call them mongoloids. They're all inbred and shit. Right. Not the descendants. So there there was no initial inbreeding un- until they started having kids. Mm-hmm. It's a it's a wild dude. But uh yeah, they lived in this office building and none of the children ever went to school. Uh, Marcus taught them at home using flashcards, school textbooks, and his own weird brand of Christianity. He became fascinated with uh David Korich. I I I should know how to pronounce this last name. But it's the guy from the Waco Siege. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the Waco Siege happened in 1993 and kind of the 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 way Marcus Wesson modeled his family was much like the the, the Branch Davidians at the Waco siege. Mm. He got a lot of inspiration for the from those uh, people on the ranch, and that's kind of the same way he ran his family. So it's a little bit cultish, you know. The Waco siege. Some people say that just people. I was just people trying to be free, but then you got people like me who say that was a fucking cult. <laughs> That was for bunch, sure. Yeah, that was a bunch of inbreeding <clears throat> cult, uh, weird motherfuckers right there. 
but Marcus described himself as Jesus Christ. Ah, and nice. he this is all his his teaching curriculum he had for his children. But he uh, he said police officers were were known as Satan and he was Jesus Christ. When the family watched television coverage of the Branch Davidian siege, uh, Marcus told the children, quote, this is how the world is attacking God's people. This man is just like me. He's making children for the Lord. That's what we should be doing, making children for the Lord. And that's what he told his kids, all of um, these. Not with your siblings, though. Right, right. And, and your children. He would, uh, that's the way he would kind of condition these girls when they were young. He'd say, this is the way. He'd tell them. He'd get in bed with them. It's fucking gross. But he'd tell him, say, this is the way a father is supposed to love a daughter. Ah. And it's our job to bring godly children into the world. Yeah. He was doing bad stuff to these kids, man. <clears throat> and the fact that this motherfucker's still alive makes you want to cruise on down to California right now. Kick him right in his presumably small dick and then push him off of a cliff. Pray that he dies. This guy just deserves to die. Yeah, I'm definitely not saying that he doesn't deserve that. And he was he was very abusive towards his wife and his children. There were uh, he would beat him with ball bats. He would beat him with electrical cord. That's I just made that. You might like it. I don't know. There's oh. a bunch of stuff in there. Cool. He would beat him with electrical cords, ball bats, sticks, pipes, anything he could get his hands on. He would. Um, there was a an, an incident where there was a one year old child in the house that wouldn't stop crying. He beat the baby until the baby's legs are bleeding. Oh, my God. There was all kinds of stories about how badly he would um, he would beat the children. There was a... a dad? <laughs> yeah, is that you? Is that you? Is that Rob's dad? <laughs> there was one kid, uh, one young boy in the family that got caught stealing a spoonful of peanut butter, and he would got he got beat every night for about 30 days. That's crazy. Until uh, he he finally, until Marcus had decided that he got his message across to not to not steal food. That's fucking crazy, man. I I'm I dip <clears throat> into the peanut butter jar every night. I think if I'm hungry and I don't want to oh, waste dude. a lot of time, I get a little spoonful a spoonful of peanut butter. Peanut butter so good. It is. Dogs love it. <laughs> I mean, dogs love it. <laughs> That's what I meant. Yeah. Dogs really love it. Have you um? Did you have the Nutter Butter uh, crumble cookies? It just came out last week. Oh, no, we, we I don't know why we didn't end up going last week. Oh, Lord. Because it's fucking $40 for cookies. That's why That's you don't go. <laughs> Fuck. No, we, we've been there like every single week, but we missed out last week. I got some more ice in there. <clears throat> <laughs> Putting hair on my balls. Yeah, I don't know what was in there. It was a lot of <laughs> hardcore shit, bro. <laughs> I was dumps a little bit of water. Yep. <sighs> he did. Uh, he prevent. He he prevented his wife from participating in the children's upbringing as well. So once they would have the kids, he would allow no interaction between the mother and the children. It was pretty much that's so weird. He was the sole figure. It was very very weird. He homeschooled the children and taught them from his own handwritten Bible that focused on Jesus Christ being a vampire. <laughs> it's fucking handwritten. <laughs> I know what y'all motherfuckers thinking right now. You say, who the fuck wrote this Bible? <laughs> I wrote this motherfucker. <laughs> we about to talk about my homie Jesus up in his motherfucker. This motherfucker was a vampire. <laughs> What better a way to scare somebody to believe in Jesus? <laughs> like, listen, you can choose not to believe, but just remember, this bitch was a vampire. Like, you listen, this motherfucker died and came back three days later. Tell me that motherfucker ain't a vampire. Yeah, he was a vampire. This guy might have been onto something. This a real vampire. He told the children that he was, a, that, that he told them that he, Marcus, was in fact a god. Oh shit! And had them refer to him, and they made and he made the children refer to him as master or lord. Oh damn! I make my kids call me master. I'm about to, I'm about to go home and make my wife start calling me lord <laughs> or master. Let's call my mom back and ask her <laughs> make her call me master. <laughs> we are technically lords or sirs. We, we are lords. We're yeah. <laughs> our buddy uh, from over the pond. He got that done for us. Yeah. He taught the children to be prepared for Armageddon and said that the girls were destined to become Wesson's future wives. 
Wesson's school curriculum involved teaching the girls oral sex at the young age of eight or nine years old. What? Their domestic. He also taught them their domestic responsibilities included washing, uh, washing. And, <laughs> this is not funny, but it's funny. <laughs> he taught the kids that their uh, their domestic responsibilities was washing his dreads and <laughs> scratching his armpits and head. <laughs> Man, I'm a fucking awful dad. I'd never even taught my kids oh, any my of that God. shit. Hey, <laughs> get here and scratch your dad's armpits. <laughs> scratch my asshole. Dude, it freaks me out so bad. Pepper loves yeah, he the taste of deodorant. <laughs> yeah, She tries so hard to get in my armpits every chance she can get, and it's so fucking weird. She catches me taking a nap or <laughs> It catches me tripping for a second. My f- <laughs> catches me slipping. Oh shit! She's like, bruh, 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 bruh. I use that really expensive Gillette like clinical shit. It's good shit. So, but I can't imagine how dry her fucking mouth is after doing that, dude. <laughs> fucking our, our our youngest son the other day. We were we woke up real early, go to a soccer game. It was like an hour away. And he was half fucking tired, and he told us he brushed his he brushed his fucking teeth with cortisone cream. <laughs> <laughs> he realized once you well, he was like, I just grabbed it. I thought it was toothpaste, and <laughs> it hit my teeth, and I started spitting it out. <laughs> I'm like, dude, <laughs> come on, man. This reminds me of this. Said it was itching cream. <laughs> <laughs> Can't leave that shit laying around. Like, well, your teeth don't itch anymore, do they? I remember when I was about his age, I told I used to tell this joke, and I didn't know what the fuck it meant. I mm-hmm. just know every time I told adults this joke, they would laugh really hard. Yeah. So I'm going to tell you this joke. Okay. Every time I say a medicine, you say 20 years. Okay. okay. Tylenol. 20 years. Um, Advil. 20 years. Uh, Icy Hot. <laughs> 20 years. Been gay. 20 years. <laughs> 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 You're sitting here spouting this off, and they're just everybody's fucking dying. <laughs> I used to tell this joke when I was a kid, dude. And my dad's buddies, they get all fucking <laughs> growling at me. <laughs> oh, you little fucking fuckhead! <laughs> what kind of their underwear are you wearing? You wearing them crotchless ones? Come here, let me give you a fucking kiss. <laughs> yeah, dude, he had this one really cool friend, dude. He used to kiss me on the mouth. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. That's actually just my dad wearing a wig is all it was. <laughs> Sexy. <laughs> he was, my dad, when we were, when I was little, he would only kiss me on the mouth when he was wearing a wig. <laughs> like the gremlin. like the. <laughs> your, he'd dress up like the female gremlin. <laughs> was your dad the vampire king? Yeah, he was. <laughs> He did make us call him master. Holy shit. The girls were not allowed to talk to their male siblings or their mother, but uh, <laughs> he didn't discriminate. He would equal, he would beat the shit out of the females and the males. But that was kind of weird how he would he would completely isolate the boys from the girls and he wouldn't um, he would not let them talk to one another. If they got caught talking to one another, he would just he would just beat them within an inch of their life. He didn't want them fucking. He wanted to save them for him. <laughs> <laughs> he he wanted the girls to stay ready for him. That's exactly what it was, man. Yeah. And he spent a lot of time kind of much like the the Waco siege, kind of preparing these kids for an Armageddon like scenario, teaching them that they were, you know, that there was a that there was a cause they were all willing to die for. There was some big plan by God to come back and they had to defend their you know, their rights and shit. Really weird situation. But that's kind of what he would he would force upon them. He told his niece, Rosa Solorio. <laughs> Rosa was also his daughter, <laughs> his niece and his daughter. Jeez. Uh, <laughs> but then he also told his um, told his niece, Rosa Solorio and his daughter, Sabrina Wesson. They were, quote, strong soldiers uh, who would hunt down and kill family members who betrayed him. Damn. And who might have to kill the family and themselves to prevent a breakup. So he was instilling in their heads, hey, like, if something happens here, I'm counting on you guys to fucking clean up the evidence, to kill to kill everybody, to, to kill yourselves. And that's kind of what he was trying to make them do. And this was, this was really weird, but in preparation for whatever, uh, Wesson 
even though he's eating goddamn Arby burgers out of the trash can and <laughs> the McStruggle burger <laughs> getting sued for welfare fraud. <laughs> Somehow he stumbled upon a lot of coffins, not like a lot of them, but a lot, like <laughs> dozens of coffins. Okay, damn. In an antique shop, and he just saw that as the perfect opportunity to to be prepared for whatever was going to unfold. So he bought all these coffins, and he and he took them home, and they were just like. Um, in in their house, they just had stacks and stacks of coffins. That's so fucking he, weird. He bought these coffins and took them home. You can never be too prepared. Uh, every day, we're one step closer to dying. <laughs> Rest yeah. in peace, Coolio. Yeah, I ain't. <laughs> Rest in peace, Coolio. For sure, man. R.I.P. Been standing most all out, living in the gangsta's paradise. That was a good song growing up. That was really good. Yeah. One, two, three, <clears throat> four. Get your woman. On the floor. <laughs> Coolio's a shit, man. Did you see that fucking uh, tweet that his one buddy posted or about? It was like him, Coolio, and the f- fucking white bitch in the middle. Uh-oh. She, He said something. <laughs> it's, it's so good, man. It says something like, uh, rest in peace, my homie Coolio. Here's us with some bitch trying to get our meat sauce. <laughs> <laughs> like it's okay. it's some, something similar to that. Uh, yeah. Don't don't quote me, but yeah, I'd be trying to get Coolio's meat. I was sauce. like, hell yeah, man. That's how that's how I want to be remembered. And kind of like we talked about at the beginning of the episode and the, the title of the episode, Marcus was obsessed and fascinated by vampires, and he actually gave himself and his daughters and nieces. But remember, his nieces are also his daughter. His daughters are his nieces. He gave everybody vampire names. His name for himself was uh, Java Marcus Spire. <laughs> Java Lord. Marcus Spire. Excuse you. Which is a mixture of Jesus, Marcus, and vampire. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I got a good name. I'm going to put all these motherfuckers together. <laughs> I like Jesus. I like vampires. My name is Marcus. Java Marcus Spire. <laughs> Java Marcus. Listen, I'm gonna spell this. Java Marcus Spire. J e v a m m a r k s u s p i r e. Java Marcus Spire. Mister Marcus <laughs> began sleeping with his daughters, Damn. and nieces after he got out of jail in 1990. You remember he had the welfare fraud and perjury. Yep. yep. Now we flash forward a little bit. According to trial testimony of Ruby Ortiz and Nay Solorio, one of the nieces sent to live with the Wessons. And you remember they, they, they adopted all these kids from the crackhead sister. <laughs> Mr. Uh, uh, Marcus began molesting her when she was only eight years oh, old. Oh, gosh. Mrs. Ortiz testified that she loved Marcus at the, at the time and at age 13, enthusiastically agreed to marry him. The marriage ceremony consisted of the couple putting their hands on the Bible and reciting marriage vows. Marcus, quote, married three of his nieces and two of his daughters this way and had children by all of them. Holy shit. Marcus fully approved of the, I'm sorry. You would think he was a Mormon. Yeah, it's a nasty ass shit. And his wife, Elizabeth fully approved of these incestuous uh, unions. And you'll remember he married her when she was only 14 years old. Yeah. Uh, In fact, when Ruby Solorio ran away from home as a teenager, Elizabeth persuaded her to come back to the house to take care of her son. uh, That, that who the father was Marcus, the vampire King. He isolated his children from the outside world and beat her with a stick or a baseball bat. When she talked to boys and did not learn her lessons. And despite the abuse, many in the family fondly remember their days with Marcus. He devised entertainment (laughs) for the family. They did plays, concerts, and ugly contests. (laughs) What the fuck? Ugly contests? An ugly contest is where the children would dress up to be as ugly as possible. (laughs) Some of them didn't have to dress up. (laughs) He had like three noses, <laughs> like four arms. That's when I take my <laughs> take my pants off for my wife. She's like, "What are you doing?" I'm like, "It's time for the ugly contest." <laughs> yeah, you win. <laughs> Here's your prize. <laughs> the ugly contest. Yeah, damn, that's fucking. 
That's bad. I've heard like playing butt darts and hide the weenie and stuff. Yeah, yeah. But never like, hey, you want to have an ugly contest? <laughs> <laughs> That's the only way I could persa- persuade someone to love me is if I say, let's do an ugly contest. Yeah, that's I've played like um, Who's in My Butt. That's that's a good game. You got to guess by the wiener in your butt who it is. There's an advanced, Dad? <laughs> there's an advanced edition that we used to play growing up. It's called uh, Whose Nut is in Your Butt. <laughs> it's like a fucking it's another game. You don't get to see the other players. Yeah. Whose nut's in your butt? <laughs> But that's the crazy thing, man. All these kids associated with his family, <clears throat> especially all the boys. Yeah. They talked very positively about Marcus. They the, the boys, they said he was the most gentle, caring human that they ever met in their entire lives. That he was he was such an exceptional father. I don't know how he could have been in the, he he had yeah. like a fucking thousand kids. But all the boys, you'll remember, were kept away from the girls. Mm-hmm. The girls had to go through different shit. But the boys said he was a kind, gentle soul, caring, thoughtful, articulate, smart, intelligent. He was just an exceptional, an exceptional mind. But. But. Yeah. He's fucking all the girls. Yeah. All the little girls, man. It's such a crazy situation. Like a. But that's. And I, I'm glad you just kind of you, you, you refresh my you hit my refresh button for a second. All right. He um, he's a cult leader. Yeah, man, is exactly what it is. Uh-huh. The thing about cult leaders, and uh, some people would call us cult leaders, but I don't think that's true. No, no, you guys, <clears throat> yeah, you guys are fine. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are fine. Just keep listening. No, no but really, uh, the thing about cult leaders, keep being patrons. <laughs> usually. A cult leader is someone with maybe some exceptional, intel- advanced intelligence, someone pretty smart. Not us. Surrounded by a bunch of stupid people. Not you guys. <laughs> Definitely not you guys. <laughs> no, we got awesome motherfuckers to listen to this oh, show. Oh, for sure. We have that. the best. Yeah, the best the fans. absolute best. But in terms of a cult, that's, for me, how a cult normally where You got a bunch of dumb people mm-hmm. being led by someone. They're like, oh, man. Oh, man. We're all and, fucking potato munchers. We better follow this guy. <laughs> but in, in a way, I mean, you can't, in this situation especially, you can't necessarily say that everybody is that followed him is dumb, <laughs> as more so the fact that any anything else off of, you probably think everybody else is exactly going through the same shit, and that's just how it is. An awful situation. Yeah, it's wild. Now, Mark, the, I'm sorry, the Wessons, they, they spooked their neighbors a little bit. Missed, uh, Marcus, like I said, he weighed about 400 pounds. And the neighbor said he was one, quote, one big, long, greasy dreadlock. <laughs> it was just so caked in dirt and oil. Yeah. And when uh, when Marcus would go outside, the women actually followed him. And the women, the women would wear dark robes and they would walk behind him in silence with their eyes pointed downwards. And when they lived on the uh, when they lived on the tugboat, the girls they would row <laughs> they would row the tugboat to shore, and they would let uh, they would let Marcus off. It was like they were all his his personal slaves. Been rowing his fat ass across the fucking water, <laughs> four hundred fucking pounds, dude. <laughs> and you're like fu- you're like nine or ten, yeah, like rowing his big fucking chubby ah, ass. Ah, shit. <laughs> Are we there yet? The fucking boat's like, the boat's starting to capsize and you're getting smacked in the head with an oar because you're not rowing fast enough. <laughs> Dude, you see that fucking, Fuck. you see that fish scandal going on right Dude, now? It's all over TikTok. <laughs> we got weights in these fish! <laughs> Call the police! <laughs> Call the police! <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Fuck you! Where's your crown now? We got weights in these fucking fish. I just love that they all they were all just shaming that dude. Like right he was just Shame. sitting there he was just sitting there like defeated and they were fucking <laughs> shitting on him. As a novice fisherman. <laughs> uh, what that guy what that's essentially the same as Let's talk to our friend that's a fisherman about that. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, man. Charlie, let's, let's, let's talk to him about I kinda it. And I kind of got the same. We talked about it a little bit. But, fucking uh, lead weights. Yeah. <laughs> the be- the part that people don't realize is uh, while there were lead weights mm-hmm. in there. He was fillets. He was shoving fillets in there, too. He also cut up other fish yeah. 
and shove those down inside the fish. <laughs> they were pulling out perfectly cut fillets. <laughs> out of this fish. I'm like, hey, don't throw that away. We can make a beer batter that bitch and eat it. He like, like I was like, I was dying on it because like I'm like, when the guy starts yelling, call the police. I'm like, what the fuck are the police gonna do? Well, but then I thought about it. I'm like, if there's a prize involved, yeah. that's fraud right there. So these guys have made upwards of six figures from these fishing tournaments. Jesus. While it. Those, that was a walleye tournament. It was a wall is walleye, yeah. That would have been a bass tournament, dude. Yeah. Where there is well, for like bass masters and shit. There were still some good looking fucking walleyes that, that guy caught too. That's what me and my dad that's what those we were good for. those are good fish. That fish tastes so good. Does that's, it really? Oh my god, they taste so good. Oh man. That's why I'm like, why are you motherfuckers weighing them? Let's eat them <laughs> bitches. <laughs> Put some chuck wagon on those so and is eat it, them. Is it typical practice for them to cut them open to check, or did they just have no, a, it's they not. just have a hunch? No, it's not. And, um, because it maybe was it because they were that much heavier than the next person's. I think there were people that were suspicious. Okay, gotcha. But what would it be for them that circuit to buy a like a fucking two thousand dollar X ray machine? Or sure, like sure. That? that would solve all their like run their fish through an X ray machine. Yeah. But then I also I was talking to one of my other buddies that fishes buy a metal detector. <laughs> and this is a a dirty trick, man. And, uh-huh. I was talking to my other buddy. He said that they'll what they'll do is they'll, they'll take fish traps. Mm-hmm. If they know they have a, a, a big tournament on Lake Lake Anderson. Yeah, this was Erie, wasn't it? Yes, it was. It was on Erie? Okay, I thought so. So they'll go to Lake Anderson a few days before the tournament. Mm-hmm. They'll catch a fucking hog, big one. They'll put it inside of a cage, like a fish uh, trap. To keep it alive. Put it down in the water, and then the day of the tournament, brrr, take off to that where they got that cage at, pull the cage up, Get the big fish out of it, and then they're 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 already hook fuck, them. they're already ahead of the game. Gotcha. Yeah, dude. There's some dirt. I'm sure there's a lot more other dirty tricks, but the, he said we got weights in these fish. <laughs> 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 I didn't know what was going on. I wa- I yeah. initially got the long version, <clears throat> yeah, the 15 minute version on mm-hmm. YouTube. I'm watching. I'm like, this is the dumbest shit i've ever seen <laughs> it's just a bunch of stupid fucking hillbillies, hillbillies. standing around weighing fish and i i clicked out of it and they said go to the f- uh, 13 minute mark dude they were it. so fucking mad yeah, this, this, i got 13 minutes and immediately this guy's digging a fucking uh, <laughs> a uh knife into pocket it. knife into these yeah. guts and tearing them open that's that's the closest thing to like a lynch mob i think i've ever oh, seen before yeah. Those guys were going to kill them. You, you would have thought it was the villagers hunting Shrek. I, you, <laughs> you know, I, torches and fucking I pitchforks. Felt ba- I felt bad for that guy standing there getting that was I was like, he's going to die. He's going <laughs> to fucking die. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And it was two guys, but it was only one dude standing there getting the brunt. The other uh, dude skirted he, off. He's like, hey, bro, I know. I know. That's what's up. I know. I know what we did. <laughs> And they kind of think they kind of talking weird. I'm gonna get the fuck out of <laughs> yeah, here. Yeah, the other dude got the fuck out of there, but the other dude was just like taking the whole thing. We got weights in these fish. <laughs> Did that guy ever talk? Like he didn't say anything the entire time they were Probably like outing him. Himself. <laughs> fucking no, dude. Man, that was that was shit's wild. Oh man, uh, <laughs> it made me pay attention to fishing for a couple days. Yeah, dude. <laughs> fucking did. TikTok did force it down my fucking throat. It so. Did. So all the boys in the family moved out of the house when they were old enough, and, and as did most of the girls. However, two of the daughters, Sabrina Wesson and Elizabeth... Whoa, whoa, whoa that's Sabrina? That's how that's spelled? <laughs> S-E-B-H-R-E-N-A-H. <laughs> Sabrina, yeah. Bro. <laughs> that's some hood shit right there. Yeah, dog. that's that's that fucking master fucking spelling. Massa. Two of the... Two of the daughters, there's also Elizabeth Briani Wesson, which is not the Elizabeth he married. I like that Briani. That's and, a fun name. And one of the nieces, Rosa Solorio, stayed with their father into adulthood, supporting the family. So they would they they would pay for him to, you know, for the shelter and food and all that shit. There were also several young children who who still lived in the house. Ooh. In two thousand three, the family, that's when they bought the office building, the older kids bought that for him. That they would eventually be evicted from it. They were evicted from it. They never. <laughs> you don't think they never you fully. Think? They never fully left it because <laughs> something happened. But yeah, they got evicted because it wasn't. Yeah, uh, you can't buy for. Yeah, you can't, can't buy an office space and live in it. Sure. But on uh, March twelfth, two thousand four, Marcus received a visit from Ruby Ortiz and Sophia Solorio. They were his, his nieces. Mm-hmm. They moved out, but they still had children in the house. The two women came to the house. And um, and Marcus started shouting at them for the, for them to leave, calling them Judas, Lucifer, and whores. <laughs> Damn, 
Whore is such a good word when using whore. the word. Whore. Get out of here, you whores. <laughs> such a good It's a strong word. word. It is. Yeah. And the reason those women were there is they still had kids living in the residence. They wanted their children. This was a, essentially a, a child custody dispute. They wanted their fucking kids back. The two women did not get their children that day. So what did they do? They called the police. They requested a peace officer exchange. Mm. They said, uh, you know, he's got our kids inside. We want him back. The cops came. The cops called their city attorney. The city attorney said, hey, motherfucker, there's nothing we can do. The, you know, there's no there's no custody paperwork. He doesn't have to let the kids go if he doesn't want to. Huh. So at that point, the cops are kind of like, you know, sorry, ladies, there's nothing we can do here. Then his wife, Elizabeth, the one that he married when she was 14, her and one other woman, they came storming out of the house. They said that Marcus had a gun. Ooh. So then the police are like, well, fuck, yeah, we get to shoot a fucking black guy. And they, <laughs> you know, they were fucking foaming at the mouth. Jacking off, yeah. Dix, what, wouldn't he have been a felon by this point? He was, yeah. Or was it just misdemeanors that he got locked up on? I, I can't say for sure. I don't yeah, know. yeah. But but they did call in the SWAT team immediately once for they sure. come out and said that he had a gun. Yeah, black man with a gun, they're going to they're gonna SWAT him. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, that's the... Uh, <sighs> That's the way it. Uh, it's the way it goes right now. And the SWAT yep. team, they came in. Uh, they're kind of making, they're devising their plan, and then one by one, they start hearing gunshots from inside the home. They can't really figure Ooh. out what the fuck is going on. They can't see what's going on. But um, just as they start to get hot and heavy, get really set up, Marcus exits the residence, hands up, oh, covered, shit. covered in blood, calmly. All six foot two, four hundred pounds of this nasty matted dreadlock <laughs> fuck. It's so much hair. He walks out of the house with his hands up, covered in blood. Ugh. Calmly exits the house. As he surrenders to the arresting officers, other officers rushed inside the home. Despite the sunny afternoon, the building was dark and silent. Against one wall, several <laughs> coffins were stacked up. Remember he bought those at the antique store. <laughs> <laughs> well, this uh, did cause the officers to have the heebie-jeebies. It didn't stop them from pushing forward, or as we like to call them here at the Brohio Podcast, the ooey-gooeys. <laughs> Fucking ooey-gooeys. Remember, ladies, you have a homework assignment this week. I got a fucking piss, dude. I'm about to piss my pants right okay. now. Okay, well, sorry, man. Just, <laughs> just fucking say something, dude. <laughs> sorry. Robert's going to pee. How you doing, YouTube? Robert. Robert is going to pee. Guess what I'm doing right now? How's everybody doing? Thanks for being here on the... How's the stream been for you guys? On our end, it looks like it's been awful. Like it's... Uh, lots of hiccups and interruptions. Is, has, the, the, uh, has the stream been okay for you guys? Let me know in the comments below. I'm going to save this real quick. Uh, hi, doing good. Kind of jumping here and there for me. Okay, I hope it's still good enough you guys can um, see us and hear us. We've missed you guys. I hate buffering. Luis got some demons, bro. Fuck. Right, back. Did you piss on the floor or did you go to the bathroom? I went to the bathroom. Man. Okay, hell yeah. That was a fast pee. Yeah. But it's coming out at terminal velocity, and yeah, I, I can get rid of it fast. Top speed. Empty bladder. Sometimes I just got to top off so I can keep moving. Feel you. Yeah. All right, Robert, he peed. I did pee. A little baby pee. It, wasn't it, was, a one. <laughs> it was a good one. I feel a lot better. Sometimes, uh, sometimes he just pees. Mm-hmm. A little bit, not all of it. That's true, yeah. Sometimes just I empty my bladder, and other times I just like... Uh, take the edge off. Yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> called edging. Exactly. Yes. I like edging. You guys should look up edging. On the, <laughs> the internet. Yeah. It teaches you wonderful things. So what the officers found in the house, or the office, oh, it, was, it was fucking horrific. Some of the, uh, Actually, some of the cops that, that stormed the building, they had to go on an administrative leave or into counseling from... from just from, I guess, the effects suffered from what they saw inside that office, that office that they were all, all living in. 
So um, inside, covered in blood, was a pile of bodies, some of which were, were children. Each had been shot through the eye. Oh, God. Because they were all in such a tangle, it would take many hours before the police could even determine how many victims there were, and it would be several days before they were all identified. They were uh, identified as Sabrina, age 25, Elizabeth, age 17, Illabel, age 8, Aviv, age 7, Jonathan, age 7, Sidonia, age 2, Marche, age 2, and Ethan, age 4, along with uh, last Java. Uh, Java was a one-year-old, one-year-old baby. I, I hate to say it, but uh, Illabel isn't a name. Anymore. she's fucking dead <laughs> jesus christ damn here's my thing dude <laughs> by, by listening to this story <laughs> this is polar I, and i'm not expressing uh political views or anything like that mm-hmm. One of, you have people that are against abortions mm-hmm. and people that are not against abortion sure I feel a certain way. Mm-hmm. If you want to know what that is, I don't give a fuck what you do. Yep. That's what I say. Not my body. But right, not my choice. Yeah, I, I can't tell you what to do with your own body. But for the proponents of not allowing abortions, what's one of the, the main reasons that someone who is against abortions, what's one of the main reasons they would allow an abortion? In the event of rape and incest, right? Sure. Mm-hmm. All of these children were conceived incestuously right well i'm sad that so many people lost their life yes this is a very fucking sad yeah, especially story. this it's literally all um, almost all i mean you, you could even debate that the oldest uh, at 25 is still a fucking child possibly possibly not it, it's hard at, for us to say at 25 i was still a fucking child i'm 35 i'm, and I'm, I'm still, still yeah i'm about to be 36 and i'm still a fucking child I don't know what I'm doing with my life, and I feel a lot more lost now than I ever have. <laughs> yeah, but I would have to imagine that some of these children that were killed were perhaps living in living a life that that there was just no quality of life. Sure, and um, an awful situation to be born into. This guy took. So much joy from so many people. And while it is sad they all died, uh, it's. I feel like there was never going to be a good, no matter what happened to everyone in the story. It's, I mean, you, you almost wonder if. If it's worth the years and years of mental help and, you know, struggles that they will go through pretty much for the rest of their lives. Uh, and but you know I we didn't know these kids, true. So it, you know it's that's why it's one of those things where it's like it's hard to like assume or yeah. try to like rationalize anything because it like you, you you don't know. And I mean when the when you vary from age one to twenty five, there's so many different takes. And if these kids are living happy, healthy lives, that fucking breaks my heart, dude. For sure, no kid deserves to to endure the the terror and horror of a of a fucking monster like this. I wish what would have happened is he would have just fucking blown his brains out and just yeah. let all these people live. But you really have to question the quality of life for, for some of these people. What it was, they're obviously getting beat with sticks and electric cords and ball bats. Yeah. Is somebody saying something really mean on the YouTube no, channel? No, um, I'm gonna. This is this is a cheap plug for a Riffin Time podcast. Said, <laughs> "R.I.P. Queen Elizabeth." <laughs> <laughs> That's a fucking good one. Yeah, keep them coming. <laughs> Lizard bit. <laughs> so good. What about the fucking sausage fingers on, <laughs> on King damn, Charles? Dude. I know, man. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Those fuckers are <laughs> <That's> monstrous. <laughs> he fingers you and you're dying. <laughs> he has to have diabetes. <laughs> it's I, I, it's poor circulation for sure. Dude, his fucking, that ring that he had on has on his finger is ingrained in his... Yeah, flesh. That, finger, that finger's like, please, God, help the king get this thing. Get me off of his finger. Please. God, that. save the king. He said those poor rings. Yeah, those fucking rings don't stand a chance. It's gnarly, man. That's a bad situation over there, too. Yeah, it is. 
in uh, in trying to determine next of kin, the coroner had DNA testing done on the victims. And what the investigators found out, uh, they're trying to <laughs> dabble in the DNA, and they said, for fuck's sake, all this DNA is the same. All these people have the same DNA. <laughs> yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. It's because it on was multiple an levels, incestuous cult. You got cousins that are sisters, and and I think the dreadlocks had its own uh, zip code. <laughs> Fuck it, yeah, they did. These are we're not like we're not giving these dreadlocks enough credit. Enough credit. These things are like a Nasty. world caliber worthy dreadlocks. Like if you aspire to be like a a dread if you're a dreadlock aficionado this is he really is your fucking your king here this is, these are the dreads you want your jiva <laughs> jivam what's what was it the jesus mass master <laughs> Je- jehovah Je- <laughs> Je- jehiva mass marcus vampire <laughs> there you go <laughs> the mctrash can dreadlocks yeah yeah that's your man right there this case is actually considered to be the worst mass murder in fresno uh fresno california history Before the trial even began, Marcus was still fighting for control. He delayed his arraignment twice, insisting that he did not, he didn't want a public defender, but wanted to hire his own lawyers. Uh, Ah. He would uh, actually be represented by David Muggeridge and Harry Harvey. They sound like (laughs) fucking good attorneys. Hi there. Have you been injured in an accident? (laughs) My name's Gary Harvey from Harvey and Harvey and Brothers. That sounds like a good lawyer lawyer name, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Gary Harvey. It wasn't clear. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what I would think he'd sound like. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Hi, have you been bit on the face by a dog? My we put na- we put liquid paper on a bee. <laughs> <laughs> My name's Gary Harvey from Harvey and Sons Law Firm. <laughs> if you've ever been bit on the face by a dog or a cat, and you're still feeling the effects from it, I can help you. Remember... <laughs> If you're trying to escape your home, if your wife's kicked you out because you're a vampire, you have options. <laughs> you got to have the voice where they always sound like they're out of breath. <laughs> if you've ever been sexually assaulted during a, a surgery, if you've ever had your gown lifted up around your neck and your crotch ripped out of your underwear during surgery, call Gary Harvey Law Firm and Sons. We can get you the... <laughs> we can get you... The compensation. So relatable. <laughs> we can get you the compensation you so deserve. <laughs> Remember, we're not licensed in Alaska, Texas, Ohio, <laughs> Iowa, Indiana, Kentucky, Maine, or any of the other states. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. That's so fucking good. That's perfect. <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard a more spot on impression that you've ever done than what I expect these fuckers to sound like. <laughs> <laughs> They're just fucking winging it. <laughs> Can you imagine being his fucking <laughs> his, his fucking lawyer that he paid for? He's like, hi there, Mr. Wesson. My name's Gary Harvey. This is my associate, Mr. Mugridge. <laughs> Mugridge. <laughs> it fucking just sounds like he just pulled him out of the fucking dirt. No credit card, no problem. We accept Cash App, Venmo, and PayPal. EBT on request. If unless you've been found guilty of welfare fraud <laughs> oh, oh shit um it wasn't clear <laughs> if wesson could afford his own lawyers okay but ultimately wesson was represented by public defenders peter jones and ralph torres <laughs> okay that's a, that's a lot more i uh, think he was trying to hire <laughs> david mugridge and gary harvey but what he ended up getting was Perry, <laughs> peter jones and ralph torres <laughs> on march uh march 3rd 2005 marcus's <laughs> trial finally started God, that was so good he was charged <laughs> with nine counts of first degree murder and 14 counts of molestations and rape holy shit as members of his family testified many of whom were still loyal to him wow the jury came to learn of the horrors that marcus had inflicted upon his family uh, his defense claimed that he didn't kill anyone, that Sabrina had actually pulled the trigger, murdering the children and then herself. And evidence was quite close to saying that that could have been the case. The uh, the evidence was inconclusive. In fact, there were no prints on the gun, but her DNA was. Her body was on top of all the others, and the murder weapon, a twenty-two caliber Ruger MK2, was found underneath of her. 
I'm still boggled at how they fucking named the, the, they spelled that name. That's the most, like, that's like basic white bitch spelling right it there. Sounds like somebody's choking. <laughs> so, blah, blah. However, it's not known if she lay where she fell or was placed there, and the same mm. could be said about the gun. You'll remember that he, when he did exit the building, he was covered in blood. But the evidence, dig the, the story that he told suggests that he might have been telling the truth, that he didn't kill anybody. But, you know, at the end of the day, he did kill these people. He trained them f- yep. for, for this event, that uh, in the event that someone tried to come and break up their home, that they were instructed to kill one another and, and kill themselves. But uh, the gunshot wound in her head was inconclusive as well, while wow. consistent with a, it was, in fact, consistent with a self-inflicted wound. A shot at close range couldn't be ruled out either. The cause of death was determined to be immediate perforation of brain caused by gunshot wound to the face. Ilabel died of a contusion of the brain after being shot in the face. All nine victims were gathered by uh, Marcus, even his daughters, Sabrina and Kiana, and three of his nieces, Safina, Solario, Ruby Sanchez, and Rosie Solario, uh, uh, close, uh, source, close to the investigation uh, advised. Ruby and Safina's testimony showed that, that uh, Marcus had complete control over the family and that he had commanded them to commit this act if the police ever tried to interfere. Having Sabrina kill the children then herself would fit his pattern of having the woman perform everything like he had done up until this point. So uh, this is pretty much everything that he planned for and the way he planned for it to happen. This is exactly how he wanted it to happen. So they would all die, but maybe keep his hands a little clean. And I don't know if, um, yeah, the ju- the they weren't buying that. In the end, it didn't matter to the jury who actually pulled the trigger. Marcus Wesson was found guilty on all counts, and on June 27, 2005, he was sentenced to 102 years oh my for gosh. the rape and molestation Good. charges. It's still crazy he didn't get death. Well, for <clears throat> the murders of, of his children and grandchildren, he received the death penalty. Okay. And he was sent to San Quentin Prison, the nation's largest death row, but in... Uh, I think it's Governor Newsom from California in uh, 2019. He signed a temporary halt of uh, of death of the death penalty. So no wow. one can no one in California can be put to death right now. I Can't know. you make an exception? <laughs> I mean, yeah. come on. Fucking cut those dreads and choke them with. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> If you get a 102-year sentence, you're fucking going to die in prison no, regardless. He, he got 102 for the rape charges. Yeah. He got the death penalty for just the, the murder charges. Just finish the fucking deal, man. Just finish. Just kill I'm it. so pro-death penalty. I, <laughs> here, I'm, I'm not going to go, like, yeah, but without getting political. Yeah, fucking kill him. Yeah, this dude has to die. I hope Pete, he, pedos, I'll just fucking get rid of them all. I hope he dies right now. Yeah. This is a sick story, man. Yeah. He did some bad shit. He he completely brainwashed these people. Yeah. He had them brainwashed into thinking he was an okay dude. We're talking about a, mur- a murdering, raping pedo. Yeah. Fucking down the drain. Put him in one of those tin coffins that he bought at a fucking antique shop. What if... <laughs> what, if what if President Biden, he goes on the on the news tomorrow and he says... I always say, uh, 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 if, you, uh, <laughs> if you if you catch a fly with a bicycle, <laughs> then your pudding's gonna turn out great. <laughs> what if Joe Byron went on the news tomorrow? And he said, "We're gonna kill him. We're gonna give Marcus Wesson the death penalty." But the only way we're gonna allow it to happen is if Nick and Rob will fuck him first. <laughs> Uh, I'd consider it. I'd fuck him to mean yeah. if it meant he died for sure. Yeah, he's he's a big, strong man though. So I mean, I, I well, don't know he, if I could get the physical advantage he's a on quarter him. Quarter of the size now that he was. When oh, he is he okay? So he's he's very he's, he's depleted, a, he's a frail old man. Okay, yeah, he's not eating like you fucking. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, he was born in the forties. You said. <clears throat> yeah, forty six. Uh, I'd fuck the shit out of him. <laughs> yeah, dude. 
He ain't getting one over me. He got you know that gas station <laughs> bussies. That's what I'd be. That's what he's, I'd be getting. He's got the bussy. I'd be getting his bussy. <laughs> Dude, one whiff of them fucking dreads though, man. <laughs> <laughs> Smell like mayonnaise left in the sun. Yeah, I remember in high school there was uh, someone we grew up with, and he was trying to make, he was trying to get dreads. Mm-hmm. And one day they were uh, they had packets of mayonnaise from the cafeteria, <laughs> and they're putting mayonnaise in his hair. And I said, "What the." Fuck? fuck is going on here they said we're trying to give him dreads yeah, i don't think you really have to do that <laughs> <laughs> i think that was just a misconception when we were kids yeah no but they were about it they were doing it yeah. full send yeah dreads i mean i've i i've smelled some good smelling dreads before i i haven't but i will say <laughs> i i will say I think they look cool as fuck <clears throat> yeah they do. i they think cool. they look really fucking cool especially if they're like if they're good ones um like if they're like dreaded all the way down to the scalp like and they're yeah it, they they look really fucking good sure. um but yeah it's and it, you you have to be you have to have the style to pull those off you do and sometimes they're yucky for sure for sure i'd say seven out of ten times they're gonna be yucky if someone saw my butt they would accuse me of having dreads <laughs> <laughs> Which would be hurtful to me. Sure, sure. I'm right there. I'm more so. So what we got from this episode is my mom's not going to make a blanket out of my underwear. Too many, too many poop stains and holes. Because she's lazy. Yeah, she doesn't sorry. love you enough. She doesn't care. No. Nah. Doesn't love me. Yeah, that's true. She, um, she's, she has spent all the love that she's going to spend on me. That's true, yeah. I think that's the best way to describe... What my mom thinks of me. Yeah. Is she's already invested Mm -hmm. everything that she's going to invest. Yeah. Also, never forget she patched a hole in one of my football jerseys when I was a kid. Yep. That's what she does. She's the best, man. She really is. She is. Dude, if I took if I would have taken those underwear to her. My mom fucking put cigarettes out on my neck. (laughs) And here your mom is patching my football jerseys. (laughs) How did you end up like kind of normal and I'm so fucked up? (laughs) <laughs> the f- the thing is is if i went over there to her house like wearing those crotchless underwear yeah and dropped trial with my balls hanging out <laughs> and said mom these are my favorite yeah she'd been like just throw them away and i say mom you don't understand these underwear mean a lot to me these are form-fitting after she'd all these say, years well, come here let me pin them together so i can figure out where i'm gonna so She'd fix them for me. I'm sure she would. And yeah. then she'd use some crusty ass fabric she had laying around to patch them up. And she'd be like, "I didn't have any like Duluth spandex to patch them with, so I used a pair of your dad's old she, work pants." She'd cut out with crotch one of your dad's underwear. I'd have half Dickies, half fucking Dick. Duluth. I'd have a half a Dicky in underwear. Oh God! I'd have a Dicky do. I got one of those. Yeah, me too. If you don't know what a dicky do is, that's when your stomach sticks out farther than your dicky do. Yeah, if you got a dicky do, send us an email, <laughs> podcast at gmail.com. Oh, God. Whew. Yeah, it's been a fun episode, huh? Man, yeah, I'm fucking crying. Well, how long we get? We got an hour and 37 minutes. Hell fucking yeah. Out of about six pages of research. Yeah, and that's, yeah, nine, yeah. Nine solid pages, that's a. No, we, it's because the, uh, if I take the stuff off the top. Oh, that's true. Yeah, because we had a lot of patrons. We've been gone for two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> Good shit, huh? That's fucking awesome, man. All right, guys. We'll uh we'll catch you on the flip side. We doing a zoom? Sure, if you want. Fuck yeah, let's do a zoom, brother. All right. We'll love All you right. Guys. Love you guys. See you. Bye. All right, YouTube. If you are a patron, we're about to send out this fucking zoom link. If you're a patron, fuck you. <laughs> but keep giving us your money. If you have dreads, I pray for your pillows. <laughs> If you don't vote for me, you ain't a vampire. <laughs> <laughs> you don't vote for Joe Byron, you ain't black. Dude, <laughs> a ripping time is fucking killing it in the comments. Who are they, man? I don't know, but that that person's... Let's get them. Let's get them. Let's... They're the third host. Send us your application. We're yes, <laughs> We got a spot for you here. Send us, send us an email real quick, or if in time, if you're uh, not a patron, we'll, we'll send you a link to the Zoom. All right, we'll talk to you guys. Just Love send it. Hurry up. Yeah, fuck you. <laughs> Brohio podcast at gmail.com. Gmail. See ya. <clears throat>